Good evening and welcome to Yahweh's Learning Channel. My name is Brother Charles Williams. This evening we're going to finish up the study we're doing on the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to do, this is part four, and this evening we're going to talk about kingdom relationships. We're going to be focusing on Matthew chapter 7 this, this evening. Let's read Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 12. Judge not, that ye be not judged. For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thy own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pour out the mote out of thy eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye, thou hypocrite? First cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocks it shall be opened. O what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Okay, and there's a lot of stuff here to go over in the first 12 verses. We're actually going to be covering this evening, we're going to be covering up to uh, verse 27, which is, I believe, the end of the chapter here. But for now, we're going to start in verses 1 through 12. Okay. And the first thing we want to talk about this evening is kingdom relationships. And that's what these first 12 verses uh, relate to, the kingdom relationships. It's usually easier to live with our own faults and failures than to live with other people's shortcomings. Has anybody ever experienced that? Able to live with our own faults and failures other than, more than other people's shortcomings. And of course, we see shortcomings in other people. Now, uh, living in a judgmental manner, explaining that those belonging to his kingdom are people who are first honest with themselves. And we can see that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, which we've already read. Now, members of the kingdom of heaven are poor in spirit. Why are they poor in spirit? Why is that? Because they realize their brokenness and need for Elohim. This is the type of person who is able to live and speak with grace and wisdom. Messiah knows humanity is bent toward worry. He reminds us his listeners, yet again, that Elohim's heart is bent towards his people. And we can see that throughout the scriptures from the very beginning. That Yahweh's heart was always bent towards his people. And the, the keeping of his people. And of course, we can see that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. He's listening and he's willing to provide. Elohim's relationship to his people is like a father to his children. A perfect heavenly father. That's the, the type of relationship we have. We call him our heavenly father. Now many ancient religions such as Buddhism have had something similar to the golden rule. Only it was negative. Do not do, not do unto others what you would want them to do to you. Okay? No, you, you said Stop. what you would want them to do to you. Do not do, unto, do to others what you would not want them to do to you. 
Oh man. It's the opposite. Okay. Okay, but stop meowing. No, maybe just pick up with that whole slide right there. Okay, I'm sorry. You got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. <laughs> He's being lovable. She was laying in her tunnel over here. Okay. Now, many ancient religions, such as Buddhism, had something similar to the golden rule. Only, it was negative. Do not do unto others what you would not want them to do to you. Now, Messiah casts this concept into a positive light. He turns around and makes something negative positive. Again, raising the bar for attitude and behavior beyond the world's highest standards. To the standards of heaven. That's the, the standards Yahweh has for us. Something way, way above this uh, worldly standards that we, we live by day to day. We can see that in Matthew 7, chap, uh, chapter 7, verse 12. Now let's think about this. When is it hardest to treat others the way you would want to be treated? How, when is that? And how does reflecting on Elohim's attitude toward you change the way you treat others? Let's just think about that. The next section of this uh, chapter we're going to cover is verses 13 through 27. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and now is the way which leads to, unto life. And few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Master, Master, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many were say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whoso heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be like unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Okay, now this section, uh, in this section right here, Messiah uses various images to explain the difference between what is genuine and what is fake? We see true and false robes in verses 13 through 14. We see true and false citizens in verses 15 through 23. We also see true and false foundations in verses 24 through 27. Now let's cover each one of these one by one. Let's first start with the true and false roads. There's two roads just talked about in these scriptures right here. One is the wide road and one is a narrow road. Okay, now first let's look at the wide road. The road is wide. This description in the scripture says it's easy, full of pleasure, and it 
and that many choose that way. And we can see that a lot today. A lot of people like to take the easy road. And of course, it leads to destruction and death, according to the scriptures. Okay, and the other road we have is the narrow road. Okay, and this road is hard, full of potential distress and affliction. And not many choose this way. Not many go, plan to go that way. And what does this lead to? It leads to life, eternity with Messiah in his kingdom. Now, you can uh, look, at, look at these two roads like uh, a road when you're driving down the street. You have a, like where I'm living, uh, we have a big road. It's two, uh, one lane going each way. And uh, it's pretty wide. It's not like a highway or anything, but it's wide enough for two cars. And, you know, it's straight and everything. And, well, it has its curves, but it's wide enough for two cars. But then again, you turn it down our street where I live. It's a narrow street. that only can require one car to go down. If you squeeze over, you can get two cars down, but it's difficult. It's a narrow street. And it's the same example with these. Wide is the gate, is the road, and that's easy and full of pleasure. And many choose to go that way. And that's the way the world is. And that's the way Satan is. He gives us a wide road. Wide road, how would we describe that? Well, we would say, well, wide road is, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want to do it. A wide road would be, do whatever pleases you. It doesn't matter what others think. A wide road would be, take the easy road out. Don't, you know, don't worry about having to take the tough road. Take whatever easy way there is. A lot of people go that wide road. But then again, there's a the narrow road. And that's one where you stay in scripture. You stay with the scriptures. You, you live for Yahweh. You live in his word. You live to obey his word and everything that's in it. It's a narrow. It's hard. It's full of potential distress and affliction. And honestly, not many people choose this way. And this is the, uh, the way it is. But look at the benefits of it. It leads to life eternity with Messiah in his kingdom. Isn't that worth it? True and false citizens. What are true and false citizens? Those who are leading people down the road of destruction can be hard to recognize like wolves in sheep's clothing. And we have a lot of that also today. People lead, leading people astray with false doctrines that aren't scriptural, scripture based. And we see that a lot, even from behind the pulpits. They may, may seem religious and even do good things, but the message leads people away from the narrow road. If you see somebody who is trying to lead you down this, this, uh, road that's not the narrow road according to scripture we need to get off that road and get on the other road i mean the wide road is what i'm talking about not the narrow road we need to get on that narrow road back on that narrow road that's the scriptures it's that you're sticking with what the scriptures say because people lead you even from behind the pulpit like i just said down that wide gate they'll they'll lead They'll say, well, you can, you can be baptized any way you want. They'll say, oh, you can, you can do whatever you want. Once saved, always saved. You can do whatever you want as long as you confess Messiah as your Savior. You're going to make heaven your home no matter what. That is not scripture. And that's just one doctrine. And that's the wide gate. It's to do whatever you want. And you're still good with Yahweh type of road. Okay. Another one is you can recognize them by their fruit. The outcome of their actions. 
The outcome of their actions is the, their fruit. What is the outcome of their actions? Many people stand before Elohim and be turned away because it's not the righteous things a person does that provides life and eternity. Not the righteous things we do. You know, we had the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You know, they thought they could do good things and be saved. Well, it's not that way. Rather, it is the entering through the narrow gate. And that narrow gate is Messiah. Then once you can enter, you do that, you can enter the kingdom as a true citizen of heaven. A true citizen of heaven. That's what we want. You know, in the last days, the scriptures say, he said, it says in scripture, it says, I'm, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker from, workers of iniquity. And in the scriptures and revelations, it says, depart from me. I don't want myself for Yahweh to say that to me. I want him to enter in, say, the narrow gate way. And it's enter in to the joy of Yahweh. The true and false foundations. The first one is the rock. What's the meaning of it? What's the meaning of the rock in these scriptures? The wise man builds his house on a strong foundation. The word, words of Messiah are the foundation for kingdom living. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. Okay, and we see that, and also in Luke chapter 21, verse 33. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Okay, when you're building a house, one of the first things a builder does with a house is they make sure it has a firm foundation. And this this is actually a biblical concept. Because the scriptures say that we have to have our foundation sure. Okay, we have to have our foundation. What is our foundation? Our foundation is the word of Yahweh. Our foundation has to be in the word of Yahweh. It'll be like sand. Which is what we're going to get into next. Okay. Now what is the result of a house that's built on a rock? Time out. Stop. You messed me up. You said it was going to be like sand. I thought you were going to go to the next one. I flipped the thing over. But you stayed right there. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. That was my fault. I shouldn't have said that. Bud, you can't. Bud, you, you wanna, can't. He could go out. Because he's just. He seems so. Yeah. Go ahead, bud. You can come back in later. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, tough bugginess. Okay. Yeah, it threw me off because you said it's like sandwich. They make no sense to me anyway because you're talking about the rock. The rock, yeah. Okay, I'll start from explaining this, the results again. Okay. Okay, what is the results? Well, the house survives a storm. The trials that we face in life will not undo a foundation that is built in Messiah. It doesn't matter what trials or tribulations. If our foundation is sure in the word of Yahweh, we will not fall. Okay, and the other uh, foundation that we have is the sand. Okay, what is the sand? Okay, the foolish man builds his house on a weak foundation. He ignores the word of Messiah and does not put them into practice. He does not put them into practice. He does not stay firm on the word of Yahweh. He, he's wishy-washy, you might say. You know, he don't have a, a firm foundation in the word. You know, you ever go to a beach and you're standing there... And the water comes up to your feet and the sand, you can feel the sand come out from underneath your feet. That, that kind of feels funny to me when I, I do that. And it's the same principle. That the foundation 
of an unstable person is in the sand. It's a, called a foolish man in the scripture. What's the results? The house is destroyed when the storms come. When the trials come, there's no foundation to stand on outside of Messiah. The storms come, the scriptures say, the storms come and they beat on the house and it falls. Why? Because his, firm, his foundation was in the sand, not in the firm foundation of Yahweh. Now let's think about this. In what practical ways is your faith characterized by the narrow way? How can people around you tell what foundation you're built on? Okay, so that's, that's the question. How can people around you tell what, what your foundation is built on? Let's look at the last one which is important one and this is going to close out this message and this series and that is your place in the kingdom you might say brother charles what you know all this and what so what's this where am i at in this what's my place in the kingdom where am i at okay the only way one can ever attempt to live a life in a revolutionary way is that is described by Messiah is through a heart change. That's the first thing that has to happen with salvation. We have to have a heart change. Or we have to have a change of a heart. However, our attempts at righteous living apart from Messiah, only result in hollow self-promotion. Anything outside of Messiah is just hollow self-promotion. And it's not going to help us make heaven our home. It's only through finding our identity in Messiah and taking on His righteousness that we can be called children of Elohim making us citizens in his kingdom and that's what our our goal should be is to be citizens in his kingdom like we're citizens here in the united states we want to be citizens more so of his kingdom now in the new testament the kingdom of heaven is elohim's gracious rule where elohim's will is done it's not our will, but His will be done. It should never be our will. That would be the self-promoting uh, uh, emptiness in our life. But it should always be His will be done. Now, because the gospel makes it clear that the kingdom is a present experience. People say, well, that, that's in the future. That's in the future. No, the, the kingdom is here present with us. Because it is us who have to live out the kingdom gospel, which is Yahweh's word. Messiah's miracles, teachings, and ministry are all manifestations of the kingdom. Everything he did were reflections of the, the kingdom. Yet, the rest of the New Testament makes it also clear that the kingdom is reality in that same future. Okay, the, the, the rest of the New Testament makes it clear. This makes this clear. The fullness of the kingdom will only be experienced when Messiah comes back at the end of time. It'll be, everything will culminate at the very end. When Messiah comes back to take his people away. Okay, and the kingdom of heaven and the promises within it are already part of the established reality. The, the assembly sees, and can, and it, according to the word, this reality of Messiah. 
and the kingdom of heaven and the promises of it. However, the fullness of the kingdom's power and influence is not yet experienced. You see, we see this. We already see this part, the promises in the, the assembly. That's reality. And the fullness of the kingdom's power and influence is yet, not yet experienced. That what's going to happen is Messiah is going to bring back, uh, uh, will bring about the full fulfillment of the kingdom in his second coming. Now we're going to close with this here. Let's think about this. Luke 17, 21 says, The kingdom of Elohim is your, in your midst. What do you think about that? How have you already experienced the kingdom of Elohim? I would encourage you to make a list of practical ways to help people around you recognize that the presence of Elohim and his kingdom. We want to thank you very much for coming this evening and uh, hearing this fourth part. And we will see you again next week. Y'all are blessed. Y'all is learning channel. Thanks you for watching this video. We hope you were edified by this content. Reach out to us with the information provided on screen. Or you may click on the links to view more of our videos. Please subscribe to be notified of new uploads. Until next time, Shalom.